Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Andy and this video will be all about deck building. In this video I will talk about Supremacy, Treaty and Deathmatch, but I will mostly talk about Supremacy and all the different modes in Supremacy. So that means for me team games, water and 101. So let's go. Okay, so let's start with Supremacy. I'm first going to talk about 101. Usually you will only send one card in H1 and quickly advance to H2 where you send your power card. So that usually is for example your 700 wood. Or if you're going for a fast fortress, you will send your 700 gold and advance quickly to the third age. Depending on your strategy, you will spend the most of your time in, the, in those games in H2 and in H3. So that means you want to have as many options as possible. And that also means that most games get decided in Commerce or Fortress Age. Most 101 games won't reach Industrial as they get decided earlier. What does it mean for your deck? So usually you want to have um, as many H2 and H3 cards as possible and only few H1 and H4 cards. Okay, but then you might be wondering what specific cards should I use in my deck? And let's start by going through all the good cards from H1 to H4. So in H1, one of the best cards is the three villager cards. And if your civilization has that card, you almost always send that card first. There are only very few exceptions to this rule. So for example, with Swedes, you could justify putting in blueberry bushes. Or with Japanese, you usually send Heavenly Kami because you only have two villagers. There are some civilizations who cannot send three villagers. In this case, you want to use some other economy card. So that could be, for example, a trickle card. So for Russia, that's the wood trickle, which um, generates wood for you. Same goes for India. They have the same card too, so you usually send this card. Sometimes if your civilization doesn't have three villagers, you could also send 300 wood. So that's usually your first card. So, But what's your second card? For some strategies, you want to send a second H1 card. So for example, if you want to go for a fish boom, you usually send your, as your second card schooners. Or if you want to go for the trade route, you usually send your advanced trade post. But for most strategies, you're just going to send three villagers and advance to the H2 as quickly as possible and send an H2 card then. So what are good H2 cards? So for H2, all cards which give you an immediate power spike, so that would be for example crates, units or villagers, are good cards. So that means 7 out of 10 of your H2 cards will usually be those power cards, so crates, villagers or units. Even if you initially don't plan on sending those cards, you still want to have them in your deck. So if you plan for example to go for musketeers and the enemy is heavily committing on skirmishers or something like that, then you want to be able to send your hussars or your crossbows to react to his strategy. What are the other three cards? Usually it will be upgrades for your units, so for example more health or attack for your cavalry or for your musketeers, or you could also think about putting in advanced arsenal or the advanced church card. Okay, so let's talk about H3. For H3, the same rules apply as for H2. So you want to have again seven unit cards and three upgrade cards. What are the best cards to start your H3 with? Usually that will be your two Falcon Nets. That's one of the most powerful shipments in the entire game. Or you could also think about sending another unit card. So for example, eight skirmishers or dragoons or cuirassiers. You can also think about putting in a mercenary card. Yes, they are very expensive, but they are also very powerful. Okay, so 7 out of 10 of your H3 cards are units and crates and maybe villagers if your civilization has that. And the other 3 cards again can be permanent improvements. There will usually be Royal Mint, um, Refrigeration and a strong unit upgrade card. So for example for French that would be the improved attack and hit points for cavalry. Okay, so for H4, usually you want to have your two factories, then maybe some other economic power cards. So for French, that would be 10 Cruelty Boys and maybe the Gendarme upgrade. Usually I always put in one unit card in H4, so for me that usually will be two heavy cannons. But usually you won't need too many H4 cards because most games end before H4. And you, if you 
come to H4, usually you want to send your factories first anyway. One last thing I want to talk about is that you have to adjust your deck to your strategy. So that means if you're playing Germany, for example, you usually won't need as many H2 cards and you can justify putting in more H4 cards. Why is that? Because with Germany, you're going to go for a FF or a semi-FF 90% of the time. So that means you won't exhaust all your H2 cards. So yeah, adjust your deck to your strategy, but your deck also shouldn't be too one-dimensional. So you always want to be flexible with your deck. So that means if your early game is going better than expected, you want to want to have the cards to capitalize on that even more and not be forced because of your deck to do a strategy which might not be optimal. What you also don't want is that if your enemy is looking at your deck and he can ride from the start see what the entire game plan is of you. Okay, let's quickly summarize this part. Usually you only need very few H1 cards, the most important one being the three villagers. In H2 you usually want to have all H2 cards, so that will be seven crates, units or economy cards, so that you can be flexible and react to what the enemy is doing. Same goes for H3, where you have seven unit cards or crates, so that you can always choose something good for the current situation. The last remaining three cards in H2 and in H3 can be upgrade cards, usually in H2 that will be the unit upgrades and in H3 that will be Royal Mint, Refrigeration and another unit upgrade. For H4 you don't need too many H4 cards because most games won't even reach industrial and the most important cards which you almost always send first are the two factories. For good measure I usually put in two heavy cannons in H4 so I can have some power spike in H4. Okay, so let's talk about water real quick. You have two choices, either you build your deck so that you can use the deck to fish boom, so that means schooners for example, or you just put in all the essential water cards so you can contest the water if the enemy is trying to boom. So the most important water cards are the water combat card, two caravels, two, one frigate, and also advanced dog and coast guards. If you want to have the option to boom on water, you put in your schooners and also your three fishing ship upgrades. For water deck, usually you also need the wood and the gold crate cards. Okay, so let's quickly talk about team games. The main differences between 101 and team games is that in team games, you usually only make one unit type. So that is, for example, as French, you usually only make cavalry. And also team games also tend to be more economy focused and not as aggressive as 101s. So that means you usually need all your upgrade cards for that one unit type you want to make. So for example for French that will be all the cavalry upgrades and you can swap out some H2 cards because most games go earlier into H3. You also can justify putting in more H4 cards for the same reason. Compared to 101 your team game has less units and more upgrade cards. Okay, so let's talk about treaty. Your treaty deck looks completely different than your supremacy deck. You usually don't need any builds, units or crates. So that means you have all your deck for your permanent upgrade cards. So you put in advanced arsenal, fencing and riding school, factories, engineering schools. For some civilizations you also put in advanced church, but the advanced church card is not worth it for all civilizations. Fill the rest of your deck with economic cards, so that will mainly be your mill and estate cards. And after that, put in your unit cards. You start with your most powerful units, which you mostly make. And after that, you start putting in your VK unit upgrade cards. You can also put in some building upgrades, so for example, more HP for your buildings or that you can build more outposts. But that's up to your choice. Usually in Treaty, there are more good cards than your deck has slots. So you kind of has to have to decide what you prefer over other cards. One more card type you always want to put in is an endless card. Some civilizations have um, heavy cannons or rockets, so you can use them. And you can also use the endless native cards if you have them. For shorter duration treaties, so for example 10 and 20 minutes, you put in your 3 villagers and 700 gold, so you can get up to fortress age and get your boom going really quick, but for the rest the deck should look similar to your 3D40 deck. For No Rush 20 I will go into detail in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's quickly talk about deathmatch. Deathmatch decks look really similar to 3D40 decks, 
you only swap out some weak economic cards so for example the h1 or h2 estate card or mill card and you put in some booming cards so that will be for example two tcs or 10 villagers or something like that typically in deathmatch you put in three to five h4 unit cards so that if your resources are drying up that you can still send some units and stay in the game okay so a quick summary of this last part in treaty you want to have as many permanent upgrades as possible in deathmatch you want to have most permanent upgrades and some h4 units and some very powerful booming cards so for example extra tcs or extra villagers for shorter duration treaty you usually put in three villagers and 700 gold so that you can advance so much faster and have a better economy Okay, so this will be the end of this video. I hope you learned something and if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you around. Bye bye!